Sweet home, Santa Barbara, where the skies are so blue. Sweet home, Santa Barbara, what's worked for me can work for you. Welcome back, friend, to Sweet Home Santa Barbara. I'm your co-host, Jonathan Robinson, and I am with my friend and realtor, Scott Williams. Hi, Jonathan. We've got a special guest today. I'd like to introduce you to her. This is Victoria Lindstrom. She's the top stager, in my mind, in the city of Santa Barbara, the community, our area here. And welcome, Victoria. Thank you, everyone. Hope you're having a great day. Well, Jonathan and I have some questions for you about the staging process, and I think we're going to just get right into it and ask a few questions. Wonderful. Go for it. Well, at, at some point in time, you had a, a former career, and then you decided, I'm going to become a stager. What was it that made you think, well, I can do this? Well, when we lived up in the Bay Area, we sold our house, and um, we staged our own home. My husband and I had a home up there. We staged it and it sold for way more than we ever anticipated or anyone anticipated. So when we moved down to Santa Barbara, neither my husband nor I had jobs. And I thought, wow, wouldn't it be great to stage homes in Santa Barbara? At that time, Santa Barbara wasn't doing it. So we didn't get that opportunity. But many, many years later, I was able to bring it to fruition. Great. What, what, was, what was the first one? What happened there? Well, it's kind of funny. I had been a wedding planner for seven years in town here, and I decided I didn't want to do that anymore. And I thought I'd retire and just be a stay-at-home mom. I was home for three weeks, and I got pretty bored. And one of my dear friends, who was a realtor, said, someone's looking for a stager. Would you like to stage a home? And I said, sure. And I brought my furniture from my own home and put it in a house and it sold very quickly as well. And from there, I made my own business cards, cut them out in weird shapes, put them out. And from there, my business grew. Now, Victoria, I um, don't know much about staging and I never staged my house in terms of you know hiring someone. Do a lot of people, what percentage of people uh, hire someone to stage their house? I'm not sure how many people hire someone, but I think agents such as a great agent, such as Scott tends to bring me in for any house that needs help, whether it be just walking through and explaining to people the flow of the, tra of, of the traffic and what they can do to increase the value of their home, or if it's mm -hmm. an empty home and we bring in furniture to increase the value as well and, and shorten the time of the sale. So a great agent uses our services as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And do you own a bunch of furniture and such, or do you rent this stuff and then put it in houses? <laughs> I own it all. So I have wow. a big warehouse and a big, and then a lot of homes out there with furniture in it. So yes, we own mm -hmm. all our own furniture. Hmm. About how many homes do you have currently in Santa Barbara? I can stage up to 80 homes at a time, but because the market is so tight right now, as you know, I think there's only 80 some homes on the market right now. Right now, we only have about 30 something homes, 32 homes, I think it is, but, um, which is low for us, but inventory is low in general. So percentage wise, we're about the same as usual, but number wise, we're lower. That's still, uh, that's an amazing percentage. That's almost 40% of the market is being staged by Victoria at yeah. this moment. Yeah, it's a lot. So. I'm curious, and hopefully it's okay to ask, how do you charge people? Is it by the house? Is it by the hour? Is it by the size of the house? What, how do you it's do by that? by the size of the house. So generally, I look at the square footage and determine from there how much I charge per the square foot. We found uh -huh. it to be the easiest way of doing it. Do you have a way of knowing, I'm sure this is an estimate, but like what the return on investment is for people hiring you? It all depends on the house. So 
for instance, uh, I did a mobile home. Believe it or not, I did a really bad mobile home. Really bad. Like the agent said, you've got to do this. 450000 he was going to put it on the market for. We staged it. And he said, I'm now putting it on for 500000 So even between prior to us staging it and, and after the stage, he increased the value by 50000 just from that. So that's kind of a fun little story to, to tell because that's a 10% increase. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Victoria, you, you've certainly, I just want to chime in there. We've oftentimes had maybe $5,000 worth of staging produce $50,000 worth of return and sometimes higher. That's a thousand percent. Yeah, I think it's well worth it. I wouldn't be in business otherwise. So, and I have to say that was one of the biggest transformations. I was, and, and I think a lot of people think, oh, my house. A lot of times they'll have a, a fixer upper and they think, oh my gosh, it's not going to make a difference. I actually think it makes the biggest difference on the fixer uppers because it, it does hide a lot of blemishes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes people live in these homes. Yes. And they're, uh, and we call you in to, what, how, how do you, how's it different for you if somebody's living there versus vacant? It's harder for us, actually, um, for two reasons. One is you've got to work with their items and try and mesh your items into that because uh, a lot of times their items are different than what we normally have in our inventory. Um, and it's emotionally hard for people. So if they're living in a home without their furniture and their things, it makes it harder for them. So we try and be selective and careful of how we treat these people. Because it is difficult for them. If they, have, uh, if they have difficult kids, can you uh, give other kids to the family? <laughs> I, yeah, right. Different, different animals, different, different kids. Uh, <laughs> different there, right? <laughs> I'm wondering if you help pack them up, for example. I do not do that. I will put furniture in a garage for them but they need to pack their own personal items because that's not really our job. And I, we're not responsible for those items. Well, now you've got a house in this example that has their furniture plus your furniture. Do you allow them to use your furniture while they're still living there? I do. Um, I ask that they return it in the same condition as I put it in, uh, but yes, I do. I, I think that's an amazing opportunity for anybody out there who, who, you know, could use a little freshening up of their stuff if they're allowed to use your stuff and they can still live there. I think that's yeah. terrific. It's pretty unusual. Option. Yeah, it's pretty unusual, but it's, uh, I, as I say to people, and I tell this to my friends, there are only so many things that are that important to you and that should be your family and friends Furniture is just a piece of furniture. So I try to keep that in my motto as much as possible because it is, it, it's not emotional for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, as somebody who is a homeowner and, and cheap, um, I think, <laughs> well, I can make my house look nice. And mm -hmm. uh, so how do you convince people or why, what do you tell them why it's better to hire you as opposed to just them put some dollars into making the house look nice. I don't always do that. Sometimes I do tell them to put their own money into their house. If I feel like it's a better value for them to do that, I'll, I'll be honest and tell them to do that. Let's say they only need pillows and bedding and a couple pieces of art and a lamp, and it's cheaper for them to do that, then I'll, I'll make a list for them and say, you know, put a lamp there, get pillows there, put a bedspread here, it's going to be cheaper for you to do it. So I am very honest about it because my goal is to help them sell their home and uh -huh. the realtor help them sell their home. And do you uh, charge like a, a, a consulting fee just for that? No. Oh, that's no. nice. Yeah. I mean, I work with these agents all the time. So my goal is to help the agent sell the home. So if uh -huh. I do this every once in a while, I do it every once in a while. It's just part of business. 
it's a win-win for everyone. Yeah. Well, you know, Scott and I have uh, more questions, but we also try and keep these podcasts to about 10 minutes. So we're going to uh, call this episode one of, of uh, what you do, and then we're going to interrogate you a little bit more in, in the next episode. So too. All righty. Very interesting. And uh, we'll see you back for the next episode of Sweet Home Santa Barbara, where we ask Victoria some more questions about how to stage your home successfully. See you soon. Thank you. So we're going to have a, a second episode, but for those people who want to contact either Scott or Victoria, Scott, why don't you tell them how they can contact you and then uh, also how they can contact Victoria. Well, the best way to get hold of me is to use my email, scott at scottwilliams.com. And the best way to get Victoria is to hire me so that you get Victoria to do your house because she <laughs> is wonderful. But if you decide you have to use another realtor, you can still hire Victoria Lindstrom of Dramatic Choices. That's her company here in Santa Barbara. Sounds good. And uh, we look forward to talking to you some more, Victoria, on our next episode. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to our podcast on your favorite app. If you know someone preparing to sell their home, please tell them about the podcast. Visit scottwilliams.com to contact me and download the two free e-booklets, Is My House Saleable Now? and How Not to Buy a Money Pit. Thank you for listening.